Well, hello, friends. Welcome to worship at Holy Cross this morning. Super glad that you're with us as we celebrate the second week of Easter, where we're allowed to relish in the good news of a resurrected Jesus, relish in the good news that the grave has no hold on us. Friends, we still get to celebrate that uh, today. As we do, got a couple of things just want you to know about. Uh, First of all, Thank you, thank you for those of you who continue to give so sacrificially in this crazy season. Those of you who have pivoted in such profound ways from writing checks every week to, uh, to remote giving. Now friends, if, if there's some of you who are still thinking like, how do I do that? Whether that's uh, through an app that you can download, whether that's on our website, or whether that's uh, text to give, all of those are available for you actually on our website. You can get all the information that you need there. So make sure to go to holycrossgenison.org and you can find all of that information. But thank you, thank you, thank you that you've continued to give in a season that is so incredibly crazy. Uh, We know, because the season is so incredibly crazy, that sometimes uh, we don't have the best habits uh, under stress, right? This is why our eating habits and our sleeping habits and our Netflix habits have all gone haywire. But we don't want you to jettison the habits of prayer, And so, friends, we want to invite you into some dedicated prayer times when we'll get together in a virtual prayer room on a platform called Zoom with other Holy Cross members twice a week, on Tuesdays and on Thursdays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Now, the the information, all the details you're going to need for that, from links to IDs to passwords, all of that is going to come straight to your email address inbox on Monday. Now, some of you are saying, well, I don't get the Holy Cross email. No problem. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to holycrossgenison.org, and on the bottom of the landing page, you're going to find a section there that says, subscribe to our newsletter. If you put your information into that, you will have subscribed, and come Monday, we're going to deliver all of that information straight into your email. So be on the lookout for how it is you can join us in prayer for the weeks to come. And finally, friends, we know, we know that the landscape is changing and it's changing almost every day. And because that's true, if you have needs or if you need assistance, friends, please, please, will you reach out to us? Will you reach out to Pastor Adam or myself, either by calling our cell phones or by getting a hold of the church office? We want to be able to help in this season. Now, friends, as we get into worship this morning, I'm mindful of the psalmist. The psalmist says this. He says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you peoples. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, O starry hosts. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him in the highest heavens and the waters above the heavens. Yes, sisters and brothers. We are called to bring him praise, along with all of the creation, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So church, as we get into worship this morning, will you join me in a word of prayer? Loving Father, grant that we, who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection, may by your grace Confess not only in our life, but in our conversations that Jesus is Lord. We pray all of this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Friends, will you join me in the first hymn of our day? Oh, 
launched of evil, that we may see our right. The Lord in rays eternal, the resurrection light. And listening to his accents, may hear so calm and plain. Sisters and brothers, we just sang about the resurrection truth. We just sang that Christ has indeed risen from the dead. And this this resurrection truth ought to have major impact in the way that we live our lives. But my guess is, my guess is that most of our lives don't look shockingly different than, say, 10 days ago. In some crazy way, we've allowed the the worries of the world to veil the Savior who has risen from the dead. Like the disciples, we haven't run to an empty tomb. Rather, we're filled with doubt. And so, friends, in these moments, let us take a moment to pause and to pray and to confess our sin. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would forgive our doubt, forgive our complacency, forgive our unwillingness to lean into you with our whole heart. We pray, forgive us, Father, and restore to us your salvation. We pray and ask this in the name of our resurrected Savior, Jesus. Amen. Sisters and brothers, St. Paul says this. He says, For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. God has given his one and only Son, Jesus, to live, to die, and to rise again so that your sins might be forgiven and you might be gifted life eternal. And so know again this day that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, we have the opportunity this morning to dive into God's Word, specifically uh, into St. Paul and his letter to Christians in the town of Corinth as he writes about this resurrection reality. And so, friends, let me, let me come this morning to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, uh, starting at verse 12. Here's what Paul writes. He says, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. 
More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the firstfruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. And then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion and authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is God's word for us this morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, Before you go and check the date or the timestamp on this video on the YouTube uh, channel or on your email or Facebook or wherever you pulled this from, uh, no, this isn't the Easter sermon. We did move the flowers off. We're on to week two here. But maybe you're wondering, what's there still to talk about? Why are we still doing this Christ is risen thing? Pastor, we already spent extra time last week, two extra services actually, Home crafts, preparations, uh, details of the events, uh, a chance to embody the events of Holy Week in a different way, to have this experience kind of like what the disciples did and the crowds as they experienced Holy Week for the very first time. Maybe you thought that was enough. (laughs) Man, big events, big events like that, one day is never enough. I mean, Consider the events uh, of these days, the ones we're in very much right now. Not celebratory events like Easter, certainly not, but certainly significant. These two are days that will be recorded in the history books, ones that your grandkids will ask you to recount, days when the world shut down. Documentaries will tell the story, our story, of this global pandemic for generations to come. Only time will tell how the economy fares, how businesses survive if they do, how the pent-up demands for goods and for services will be met by industries that don't have the resources or the time to provide for everything that's needed in the moment, how much students will be hampered by the COVID gap in their educations or churches redefined by the COVID jump to online, or how social distancing may become a norm Because of fear of contact with other people. Like a massive rock thrown into a still pond. The ripples of these days will roll into many days, years, generations to come. Some say the world will never be the same again. But however significant this seems to you in the moment or even as it turns out to be in the years to come, however tempting it might be to dwell on the gravity of this COVID crazy, step back for a moment this morning in the midst of it all in this Easter season to see a far greater historical event that is, without a doubt, the biggest rock to ever fall in this proverbial pool the most significant event that will ever be in the history of all human existence, the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Can I get an amen? Easter's joy is not limited to the celebration of what happened in the past. It's not a one-day celebration. What's worth celebrating is not just what happened on that day, but how that day still has an impact on these days and the ones to come. The resurrection of Jesus still matters. It still matters today because death still matters today. 
Because we're still facing death. Literally, it's in our faces every day. For me, in a way, it's, I've never had time like this before in my lifetime. Where images of refrigerated trucks lined up outside hospitals are now commonplace. Ominous markers of the, the number of deaths they experience daily. I heard an ER doc on the news the other day describe that he's seen more deaths in the past three weeks than he has in the past few years. Counts are updated daily. Number of cases, number of deaths. How does our state match up against the other states out there? How does our country match up against the others out in the world? It is like a worldwide, really sick version of amateur golf where no one wants the highest score, but nobody really has much control over the trajectory. And that's all just the people we don't really know. The sad families that we empathize with as another ticker shows up on the phone or the TV, for many of us, death actually looms much closer than that. As our loved ones live and work in similar front lines, facing the same disease, sometimes with certainty, but always with suspicion that someone might already have it and just not know it yet. Some hospitals, I've learned, are even deploying extra staff expressly for the purpose of watching their co-workers take on and take off the protective equipment that they would use to shield themselves from this invisible enemy that is lurking. One wrong move, which glove or thing to take off first or last, lets the enemy get one step closer to that worker and to the people that they live with and love. It is an acute threat to those on the front lines, and yet it's something we also face every day, every time we go out into a grocery store or touch any surface in our community, knowing that it has severely affected people of all ages and health conditions, and they actually still don't fully understand how the disease works, how to treat it. We face the threat of physical death daily in ways that most of us, if we haven't been to war before, have never faced. And the challenge is not just death for ourselves, but in recalling the pain that we've experienced with loved ones in the past and their death, and anticipation of those same sort of things and that pain coming again. How much death stings, and we know this, how it hurts. From hospital and a hospice bed to final breath and final heartbeat, it hurts. From emptying our tears in the now empty bed, losing sleep, looking at the lonely chair that will never again be filled, it stings. You can see it in the vacant expressions at visitations that we can't even go to anymore. We can sense it in the building frustration at the funeral. The sting is unmistakable in the finality and the gravity of the grave. Death still hurts and this is why the resurrection still matters because what once was a vibrant life, a person with years of history, with love for family, camaraderie with friends, with accomplishments, with dreams, becomes a lifeless body sealed in a box or an urn whose only ongoing presence are words carved in a stone that marks that place. One that looks maybe like this. We read the words on there for you. Here rests what was mortal of Samuel Barr, age 42. In search of health far from his endeared home, death arrested his progress on the 2nd of April, 1831. Quietly he fell asleep in the Christian hope of immortality and glory forever. A beautiful testimony to the hope that of all who trust in Jesus. That, that final sentence pointing to the hope of the resurrection. But friends, let me tell you about this tombstone in particular. God in his wisdom led a songwriter with a band uh, called North Point, uh, the North Point Worship Band, to, to an earlier phrase etched on this stone. To proclaim the hope of the resurrection in a way that's even more memorable. And that I hope that you can carry with you this hope of the resurrection with even more ease in these days as I let you in on what he discovered. He noted, we realized that death did not arrest Samuel Barr on April 2nd, 1831, they write. But in fact, Jesus arrested death for Samuel Burr on April 2nd. 
1831. Christ arrested death for him when he breathed his last breath. This is profound, my friends. What's primary for this man for every believer in Jesus Christ is not that life was arrested, that it was stopped in his tracks, but that Jesus arrested death for him, that Jesus stopped death in the, from having the final say so that the hope of eternity with God would be his reality. In fact, it would probably be even better if all of our tombs said something like this. Take a look at this one. Future resurrection spot of Because friends, this is the hope that is proclaimed by Paul. It was read a minute ago, but let me give you a portion of it again. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. The picture here is, is one from agriculture, and I picture a vine with, with grapes on it, and the, the first couple grapes coming on, and the idea is that the first grape off the vine gives a taste of the other grapes that are still to come, Jesus being the first grape, the first fruit, but us being right behind is what's declared. Basically this, what happened to him being raised, coming back to life, will happen to us. He already arrested death, already stopped it in its tracks. And when he connected us to his death and resurrection, we got the promise that death was arrested for us as well. And that connection comes in baptism. It's so clear here in Romans. Don't you know, Romans chapter 6, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Now those North Point songwriters initially point to that moment of this man's death, that Jesus arrested death at that moment for Samuel. But their song's memorable refrain leans on this truth in Romans declared there that hope begins now. It declares your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began began. What happened on the cross, which was made clear in that empty tomb, that all that was left was the grave clothes lying there, has been given to us in baptism. Here, the, the water, um, uh, the image of water in the lyrics of this chorus, Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new now. Life begins in you, Jesus. But I imagine as you sit here in these times, with death so much before us, that you wonder what that life really is. That one that begins in him as we continue to face death all day long. Physical life with him? Yes. Physical life with him. When with a body like he had, like his resurrected body, this will be our future when our physical life is arrested. But not just that. Also, spiritual life Now, we were, you were, uh, this is what's written in Ephesians chapter 2, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. That's where we all started. That's how we were all born. But because of his, because of God's great mercy, because of his love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Alive, to see the truth that the empty tune means we get full life. Alive to the reality that even though death still matters, it will not have the last word. And its threat does not need to consume my mind or my thoughts or my priorities. He not only arrested death, but the fear of it, the anxiety and the grief that surrounded it in arresting death. He showed that he is in charge, that he does have power over everything, and that he is in the process, as we read before, of putting all things under his feet, 
even and especially this COVID virus. And on the last day, the last thing to be put under his feet for good is death. I have been made alive to see these truths, spiritually made alive so that I could see these things that can bring perspective and can bring peace in the midst of it. But let me confess for you today that death distracts me. So I don't always see these truths as death is ravaging the world around us and the people around me. As it threatens our economy and our businesses and our churches and our schools and our future. I learned this week that I didn't even realize what it was doing to me. I found myself much like I am now. I found myself with tears flowing down my cheeks, seemingly out of nowhere. I work from home now, so did the honest thing and, and hid them from my kids. <laughs> Slow to share them with my wife. I was confused, embarrassed, reeling. It was a, a friend's timely Facebook post that finally gave words for what I had been experiencing, but hadn't fully realized. That all of this had so captured my attention that it had actually been a bit of a rush, a call to action, an adrenaline kick, a fight or flight response of, shorts had, of sort had kicked in. New rhythms for church, new things to do, new patterns at home, new opportunities to serve in our community, to connect with other churches, to care for people in these new needs. There were things to be done, good things. Action that needed to be taken to help people in the community in my own home. Death tolls were updated and continued to roll in daily and hourly. The notifications kept pushing. I can't stop. I gotta keep pushing. It's coming. Will we be ready when it hits here? I was distracted. Even while I was doing good things. I invite you to ask yourself today, are you? Have you slowed down, slowed down enough to even give yourself a chance to know? I was distracted from the truth. The death was arrested for me. So while much of my future, much of our future is uncertain, the certainty of the ultimate future can bring a measure of peace to this immediate moment. This moment where my new life begins fresh every day, where the one who arrested death for me is still with me as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He is with me to comfort me, to provide for me, to bring me to and through the other side of this, whatever that may look like. I won't and I don't meet these challenges alone. But I didn't see it. I wasn't paying attention to that reality. Even though I've been having some pretty regular quiet times and daily time in prayer, I'd lost sight of these truths until I'd gathered with other believers who'd asked how I'm doing and encouraged me to see again how God is still with me and how his resurrection still matters right now. I share that today both to tell you what's real because I don't think there's any place for faking it and because I'm guessing I'm not the only one that's lost sight or the only one who will lose sight as we walk through this valley of the shadow of death. So I want to invite you would you join me and Pastor Brian in adopting a regular rhythm for fixing our eyes on Jesus? Join us at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday. 15 minutes of guided prayer. Join us for the sake of encouraging others like me. Join us 
for the sake of discovering what you didn't see. I tell you, we won't have all the answers, but together we'll take our needs and those of the world before us to the one who, by arresting death, has proved that he is more than capable to provide. Join us in celebrating on those days. Celebrating anew in these history-making, COVID-crazy days, how the greatest event in all of history, the physical resurrection of Jesus, still matters today. When death was arrested, our lives began. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let's sing that song. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope and no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, your grace so free washes all. with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life begins with you our savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new, now life begins with you. Join 
and the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began, we're free, free forever, we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began, when death was arrested and my life began, when death was arrested and my life began. Friends, having sung not only of death, but also of life, let us profess our faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit using the words this morning of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, let's take an opportunity this morning to pray on behalf of those in need, on behalf of our community and the world at large. Almighty God, we give you thanks this day for the gift of life, for the truth that death has indeed been arrested in the death of Christ, but to know, Father, that we have been set free. And so by your Holy Spirit, empower us to live in that freedom today and every day. Father, we continue to come to you on behalf of those who mourn, for those who grieve, who in these very weird days are not able to, to gather as a family or a community to, to pool their grief together, to console one another. And so, Father, we pray that they would experience a peace that is beyond understanding, that though they are separated by miles in geography, to know that they have the one church with them, to know that sisters and brothers in faith are shoulder to shoulder with them in prayer. Comfort them, we pray, with the hope of the resurrection. And Father, for those, for those who are sick, for those who are battling against disease, who are <laughs> waging a war against their bodies or their minds or their spirits. Father, be the good physician and provide the healing they need. Father, we pray that at this very moment, at this time in history, Father, that your church, your bride would rise that she would be working powerfully in communities around the world. Father, give your church a heart for the broken and lost and grieved. Father, give us the power and the strength and the courage to be your hands and your feet. Give us opportunity to serve in ways that we have not before. May this context of a, of a disease, of a of a virus, of a stay-at-home order. May it be an opportunity, Father, for the church, for the church to take up a position in our community. And Father, we think of missionaries around the world. We think of Nora in Haiti. We ask, Father, that you would continue to strengthen them in all that they do, that you would use them in profound ways to continue to be purveyors of the good news of a resurrection. And Father, for the ministries of care that function through this community of faith, for the food truck, for those who came yesterday and received food, bless them, Father. For those who volunteered their time, Lord, to give that food away, bless them. For the ministry of hand-to-hand, -hand, for the food pantry, for all of the ways that 
that Holy Cross continues to care for the community. We pray that you would strengthen those who serve and that you would bless those who receive. So, Father, for these prayers and all the prayers that are in our hearts and in our minds, we thank you that you have heard them. And now we join our hearts and our voices in that prayer which Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let's join our voices in singing. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love. Come down. I once was blind, I could not see, chains of sin had shackled me, but God in heaven heard my plea, Jesus, Jesus rescued me, Jesus, Jesus rescued me. I will sing forever of your love, come down with my hands to heaven, shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love, come down. Now grace so sweet, it floods my soul. And hope eternal won't let go. My debt erased at Calvary. Jesus, Jesus rescued me. Jesus, Jesus rescued me. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love, come down. Well, there's a home beyond the sky. A song we'll sing for all of time. The grave is empty, I am free. Jesus, Jesus rescued me. Jesus, Jesus rescued me. I will sing forever of your love. Come down with my hands to heaven. Shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love. Come down. I will sing forever of your love, come down with my hands to heaven, shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I will sing forever of your love, come down. I will sing forever of your love, come down. I will sing forever of your love, come down. Well, church, we have the opportunity to continue to celebrate that resurrection truth. We pray, we pray that one day is never enough to celebrate this good news. And so, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.